Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, we're going to explore letting form be letting form be as a way to rest in awareness. Okay, um, we can describe this in other ways. Um, for example, in Sogjin and the Four Contemplations, it's called Beyond Movement. Um, but essentially, we're we're working with letting go of as in seeing form as an obstacle to resting in awareness. Okay, because last week we were specifically working with the empty, open, spacious quality of awareness. And uh, we, in, in that way, we actually worked with form and movement as sort of an obstacle, a distraction to get at this quality of emptiness. And we particularly used concentration or fixation as a way to block, you know, we're, that's what we're doing. We may not even say that we're blocked, but when, we concentrate, when we're concentrating, we're really blocking out everything but the object of concentration. So there's a sense of blocking out uh, distractions, movement, form, anything of uh, anything arising in the six senses, we're, we're blocking it out. And through that blocking out, and then when we let go of the concentration, the idea is that it's a technique that can help us recognize right as we let go of concentration, we can recognize this open spacious quality of awareness and rest there until this feeling of spaciousness of emptiness of openness dissolves in whatever way or we get distracted or sleepy or whatever and then we recognize that and we repeat the process of blocking right blocking and and aiming and in a way that we're trying to hone in exclusively exclusively on this quality of emptiness so this is part of uh this process of this unfolding of the three statements of Gaurav Dorje. This first one was about recognizing awareness. Just what is awareness? Let's, okay, let's point it out through these techniques. So last week we were using that technique to point out the empty quality of awareness. Um, this week though, we're shifting gears. We're, we're going to work with form in a way that it's not an obstacle. It's not a problem. It's actually part of awareness as well. So real quick is, you know, you actually already know this, I would uh, actually argue. And how you know this is that if you've ever experienced uh, a moment of stillness, of spaciousness in meditation, even if it's brief, uh, you are breathing in that moment. So the breath is movement. Okay. Um, now, the trick here is obviously recognizing that movement and the emptiness at the same time, because they're both present at the same time. And to paraphrase Judith Blackstone, in her realization process techniques, there's an instruction to notice the stillness of mind and breathing at the same time to notice that breathing doesn't disturb the stillness. So it's one of the most basic forms that we can work with uh, to, to, to note that, yeah, movement is a problem. In fact, it's really interesting that, uh, you know, we often work with the breath for concentration. So we're using this thing this experience that is moving in order to find stability and stillness and openness. So yes, awareness is open, empty, spacious. And at the same time, there is movement, okay? Uh, thoughts, feelings, sensations, the objects of the senses, these are all occurring and it's all happening at the same time. And we don't have to limit our experience to the empty quality. So again, last week we had that warning there that the goal is not to say that emptiness is it. And, and what we need to do is always be in some experience where there's no movement or no thoughts or no feelings or no objects. We were only working with the technique in that way for in a skillful means, practical way, just so we can kind of explicitly get that taste of openness. So when we use that, uh, that phrase beyond movement, it really points to not in opposition to movement and form. So today we're going to be working with that to, to loosen this habitual reaction or tendency to see movement and form as a problem as and somehow an opposition of resting in awareness. So, um, you know, last week uh, we also worked with the technique and social meditation, two words, Spon uh, in a spontaneous way, spaciousness and release, right? So when we we're experiencing this quality of openness and spacious awareness, we can note that spaciousness. And then when we felt like we got distracted um, with movement, 
uh, or form, then we would use the word release. Okay, that's what we did last week. And so again, there's a sense that like the movement and the form is an issue, a problem, right? Um, and in that technique, yeah, it is, but not in uh, the direct experience of awareness. So um, this week we're allowing form to be. We notice form, we notice movement, we're allowing it to be, okay? Uh, and that even with form and movement, we can rest in awareness. And it's through the movement, through the form that we, we rest in awareness, not at, in opposition to it, not going around it. Uh, that movement and form does not obscure or block awareness. Actually movement and form reveals awareness. So that's a, a palpable shift from the approach of last week. Awareness, another way to say this, and I think I brought this metaphor uh, as well, but awareness reflects movement and form like a mirror. That's the example given often. So the, the mirror is empty in the sense that it, anything can appear before it. It's not filled such that it wouldn't reflect anything. Um, and yet it reflects everything instantly, no, without effort, without uh, any conceptualization and, and discretion. Everything is recognized in awareness immediately. So today, the technique we're specifically gonna work with in social meditation is just six sense noting. So this is a combination of two uh, meditation approaches and social meditation that we already have, six sense uh, noting and just noting. So in six sense noting, we're using the phrase there is and then noting one of the six senses. And so this is a mindful way of approaching this. So um, you know, we might notice a movement or an experience arising in form in one of the six senses. And in that moment, we, we recognize that and we know there is seeing, there is thinking, there is touching. So six senses here, thinking, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, or we can use the word feeling in, instead of touching. Now in, implied with this are the, the sense objects. So thoughts, sounds, visual objects and movements, smells, tastes, and physical textures and sensations, right? Uh, but obviously all of these are happening at the same time. Uh, but in mindfulness, you know, we start to hone in and, and, and see the components of, of experience that we normally take to be the solid, uh, singular, uh, permanent kind of experience. And we see that it actually is composed of a lot of different things. So this there is noting helps to do that. Now, just noting uh, uh, practice, we, one of the most common ones we use here is just noting, just sitting. So we do it spontaneously often and we just sit and we note that, just sitting. Just sitting. So this points to nothing needing to be done. So we let go of effort and, and technique except here we are using a minimal technique of just noting, just sitting. But there, there's a sense of nothing to be done, no effort, no plan. So anything that's arising in the six senses, yeah, we're just sitting. So here, that's what we're doing. We're bringing these two techniques together in just six sense noting. Our six senses are open, okay? And uh, anything can arise in the six senses. We just notice it and we notice that it's just what's happening in this moment, just seeing, just thinking, just hearing, just touching, just thinking. So we don't have an intention to analyze or evaluate anything. There's not a goal, yet the senses are open. The senses are receiving. Senses are open to any form and movement. And we can rest with that. We can rest in the awareness of and in and through the six senses. I wanna share two passages here, teachings that elucidate the heart of this practice. 
The first one is from Longchenpa, his basic space of phenomena. So this passage here from me points to movement and form um, of the six senses being opportunities to reveal the nature of awareness. Okay, so instead of obstacles, opportunities. So here, throughout the entire universe, all beings and all that manifest as form are adornments of basic space, arising as the ongoing principle of enlightened form. What is audible, all sounds and voices without exception, as many as there may be, are adornments of basic space, arising as the ongoing principle of enlightened speech. All consciousness and all stirring and proliferation of thoughts, as well as the inconceivable range of non-conceptual states, are adornments of basic space, arising as the ongoing principle of enlightened mind. So this word adornment is quite used uh, often in Tibetan Buddhism, Vajrayana. So if you just imagine that, like adornment is usually something that we use in a positive sense. It uh, enhances something, an adornment in clothing or an adornment in a house or something like that. It adds to it. It's not something that takes away. Um, but here, um, these are all metaphors to help pointing out. We, you know, It's not something to conceptualize or take literally. But if it's an adornment, then we can relax and just see, just touching. The second passage is from the Buddha. And uh, my pronunciation might be bad here, um, Bahiya Sutta. And uh, this points to, for me, to the, the practice of nothing needing to be done. Uh, we are just sitting here with the six senses. So, Herein, Bahia, you should train yourself thus. In the seen will be merely what is seen. In the heard will be merely what is heard. In the sensed will be merely what is sensed. In the cognized will be merely what is cognized. In this way, you should train yourself, Bahia. So, that word merely is repeated. And we could say it's uh, synonymous with just, just seeing just thinking, just touching. So this is what we're gonna to practice today. <laughs> 